so yesterday we saw about uh, the conditional statements if else else if statement all those things we have seen so today what we're going to see is we are going to see loops okay so so we are seeing looping statements okay so looping statements what are they used for if you want to uh, execute something over a number of times okay so you want to execute something repeatedly depending on some condition so for that looping statement is uh, used so as of now by default if you write something let me open a clause this way okay so by default if I have a method if I have some code executing inside that particular method everything will be executing once okay one line by line line by line it will be executing now if I have to do something repeatedly like two or three times or do some calculations repeatedly so for that iteration is used so iteration uh, is of three types here basically two types only okay so we have a while loop okay then we have do while okay, and then we have for loop All right. so while loop so if you see while while is the um, entry control loop so it is entry controlled so what's an entry control loop entry control loop is where we give the condition before entering in the loop okay so looping statements based on the conditions so it will be always based on the conditions that you specify so based on the condition that you specify the um, code block will be executed so if the condition is true then it will enter inside the block and once so let's say if I have oops. So let's say if I have a block of code inside this block, I have uh, let's say number of code is there. Okay. So if I have uh, some code in here. Okay. So in this block, if I have a number of code. Now, if I want to iterate this over a, a period of time, or if I want to iterate it number of times, then I have to give one condition. Okay. So in this condition. So in this bracket, we have to give some condition. If this condition, in this condition, we have to give one Boolean. So we have to give one expression actually. That expression can evaluate to true or false. So like yesterday, we saw one example for if else, right? So if something, if that particular condition becomes true, then it will come inside the inside the block. So similar to that, in if else also, sorry, in, in conditional statements, uh, in iterations also, we do the same thing. Okay, so we put one condition if this condition evaluates to true and false it will come inside and once it reaches the end of the scope okay once it reaches the ending bracket it will again go back to checking the condition okay so let's say we have some more lines here let's say line some more line of code let's say something is there let's say system.debug itself is there okay some line of code here is here and some line of code is here let's say some code line something is there okay here also so let's say the execution is coming from top to bottom okay so it will see the line it will execute this then it will come it will check the condition so if the condition is becoming true so in the condition statement if it sees that it's an if it's a loop like it's a while loop or do while loop it will check and then this will be evaluated to true or false whatever it becomes if it's a true or if it's a false so if it's a true then it will enter this loop okay and it will enter and whatever is the code is written here it will be executed once it is executed it will reach the end of the scope here this part it will reach again it will jump back to the condition and the condition will be checked again whether that condition is becoming true or false if the condition is true again it will enter in the loop once again and execute the whole code once again in the same way okay and it reaches the end again it will go to the condition so as long as the condition is true it will keep on executing the same block okay unless the condition becomes false it will not exit out of the loop so if it comes here in the end and it jumps back to the condition once again it checks when that particular condition becomes false 
so now it starts from here so the, now the next line of code will be executed okay so these points this line and this line is saved in the memory it was saved in the heap memory like it stays actually in the stack like which line it is executing and which line it uh, it has to jump back so those things it will be saving somewhere okay so it knows that where it has to go when the line uh, end of the code is happening and when the condition is false so when the when the condition is false then it will jump back automatically to the next line okay so if the condition is false then it will not come inside this is the basic structure of a conditional statement okay same thing is for while loop also do while loop also for loop also same thing it's just that syntax is different and usage is different okay we'll be using them in different different places okay so now let's check out the syntax of our while loop okay so first you have to create while so if you write while here in this while you have to write one condition so here we will be writing the condition okay after the condition we will be having one bracket so in this we will be writing our code okay and this condition must be evaluated to true or false okay so as long as the while condition is true it will keep on executing and this is called an entry control loop why because while entering the loop itself we are checking the condition okay so it is entry controlled so unless this condition is true it will not be evaluated even at once okay but we have something called do while which is different so in the do while so let's say we have a so do while structure is do first and then we have while statement okay so here you have to put the condition okay so in the do while statement first the and uh, the execution will enter the loop okay first it will be entering the loop now once it has executed whatever we write inside the code inside the block after that the condition will be checked now after the condition if it evaluates to true it will iterate one more time if it evaluates to false it will come back come down okay so here at least once the execution will happen it doesn't matter if the condition is true or false so in the do while at least once the execution will happen okay if the second time condition is true then it will go back and will iterate it one more time if it's false then it will come out of the loop okay so that is why this is called as an exit control loop because here at the exit we are checking the condition okay and the while loop is an entry control loop here at the entry itself we are checking the condition okay so that is the structure of the while loop and the do while loop okay now after that we have some loops for for loop so in the for loop for loop has three types of loops okay so one is the uh, traditional for loop okay so let me call it as uh conventional loop conventional for loop so conventional for loop is you have to create one variable here so inside the for you have to create one variable first integer i equals to you have to in initialize it with some value okay so if you want to iterate something over 0 to 10 so if you want to iterate it 10 times okay if you want to like repeatedly execute some block of code 10 times so first value i have to give i equals to 0 then i'll call it i less than 10 okay so if i want to execute it so if i value is 0 and i is less than 10 then i want it to come inside the loop okay so that is the condition here and i okay and after this is called the initialization part okay so the first part is called the initialization part then we have the conditional part and then we have the increment or the decrement part okay so here if you want to increment if you want to change the value of i from 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so here we will put one increment i plus plus okay and then whatever you write inside this for loop that will be executing 10 times okay let's say i want to do one system system dot debug so if i just 
initialize if i just say the value of i so it will give me 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 okay it will give me 9 because i is less than 10 so i is never equals to 10 i cannot be equal to 10 before i equals to 10 it's less and it will be getting out of the loop so how the execution of this for loop is happening so i'll show you Okay, so let me see if I resume the recording. Yes, okay, still recording. So let's say the line of codes are being executed, okay, and it is coming from here, 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 and then this line it reaches for loop. So once it reaches for loop, then inside the for loop we are initializing one integer with zero. So here one integer will be created i, and the value will be zero okay now the first statement we'll be executing is this now after this it will jump to the condition okay after this this is condition this is part where we it will check the condition this has to be either true or false okay this 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 place is where we put the condition okay now if i is less than 10 i value is what zero zero is less than 10 definitely then it will not go to this third statement it will automatically come inside the this thing Okay. If the condition is true, it will come inside the loop and inside the loop, whatever we write that will be executed. So system dot debug of I, it will be showing me zero. So zero will be displayed on the screen. Okay. Now after executing this, it will come to the last line and it sees that the scope is ending. So it will jump back to the increment. So it will jump back here. Now it will do I plus plus. So the value of I will become one. So it will become one now okay now after incrementing it will again come back to the condition now again it will check the condition so now again the condition it will check whether it's true or not so if i is less than 10 so i value is 1 which is less than 10 that is true again it will jump inside the loop so inside the loop it will execute whatever is happening so system dot debug of i it will display 1 so one will be displayed and after it sees that the scope is ending the line is coming to end then again it will jump back to iteration okay it will jump back to uh, it will jump back to the increment operator again it will change it to 2 okay so this will be changed to 2 and now again it will come inside it will check the condition once again if it becomes true so the condition is true it will come inside and it will execute the line of code which is inside the loop Okay, so that is how the for loop works. Okay, so in this you have three parts. So in a for loop, in a traditional for loop or in a conventional for loop, you have three parts. First is the initialization. Okay, first part is the initialization, then you have a semicolon and then you have a condition. Okay, so this is where you put the condition and this condition must be Boolean. It has to be evaluated to either true or false. Here, whatever expression you give, that must be evaluating to either true or false. You cannot put a string, integer, those things you can't put here. Okay. So the whole expression that you write, that must be either evaluating to either true or it must be evaluating to either false. Okay. And the last part is called increment or decrement. Okay. So this is increment or decrement. Okay. And this is the block of code that we'll be executing. So this is a block of code. So this will be the code block. Okay. So that is a conventional for loop. That is how the for loop works. So this you have to remember that in which sequence the execution will happen. Okay. So first the initialization will happen. When it's uh, first initialization will happen, then it will check the condition. Okay. Once the condition is true, it will come inside the loop. Okay, whatever is there in the loop that will be executing now once it sees that the code is ended the block is ended from here again it will jump to increment or decrement so whatever you give if you give i plus plus it will increment if you give i minus minus it will decrement so after the decrement again it will check the condition so 
so it will jump back here it'll check whether condition is becoming true or false if it becomes true it will again come inside the loop okay and same thing will be repeated until the condition is evaluated to be false okay so that is what for loop will do okay so this is a traditional for loop the other for loops we'll see in a little bit okay let's just check out some examples that we can do using our while loop do while loop and uh, we will do using the trend, traditional for loop that's a very basic example okay let's check it out so this execution you guys understood like how the execution will happen like in which sequence for for loop in which sequence for while loop and in which sequence for a do while loop any doubts in this okay Okay, so let's just check out one example. Let me create a new class. So I'll create a new class. Or I don't need to create a new class. I'll just use an anonymous window. Here. So if true, if false, let me take out all these things. Okay, so let's start with a while loop. So my aim here is to display, let's say, uh, 10 numbers, okay? 10 numbers I want to display from uh, 0 to 10. Or I want to display um, 1 to 10, okay? I want to display 1 to 10, okay? You, so if I, if I want, I can display something like this also. I can write system uh, dot debug and I can write here 1. Okay, and the same thing I can write Okay, I can write here 10 times I can write here like 9 I can write here 8 7 6 5 4 3 This will be 2 and this will be 1 same thing this is just for 10 imagine if i have to like display 100 numbers in that case what i'll write 100 100 times no i don't have to do that so i have something called loop which i can use okay so how will i use so first thing is okay so first we'll take this out so first is a while loop the most widely used is for loop we'll always be using for loop only we'll not use a while loop or do while loop okay but it's there so if you have some condition like that then you can go ahead and use it there's no problem with that okay so in while we have while and then we have a condition then we have a code block so inside this while i have to check the condition whether it is true or not okay so i have to check whether i have to keep one counter which will count from 1 to 10 okay so for that i need a variable so that variable i have to keep it somewhere let's say i have to keep an integer i or integer let's say count itself equals to i have to initialize it with one okay so i'll initialize it with one and then i will check whether count is less than or equals to 10. Oops. okay i can check if count is less than equal to 10. i can do also like count is less than 11 that is also fine no problem okay same thing so as soon as it's as long as it's less than 10 or 11 it will less than 11 is what 10 so it will iterate only till 10 times okay if i want to use equals to i can use equals to so it will iterate till 10 using this equals to 10 that is the difference here okay it's just up to personal taste okay now in this what i have to do i have to write one system dot debug and in this debug, I have to just write the value of count. Okay. Now it will iterate over 10 times. That is how we are supposed to work. But this will not iterate 10 times. This will actually iterate infinite times. Okay. It will keep on iterating, iterating, iterating. Because the count value is always 1. Is always 1. So this is an infinite loop. Okay. So we have to increment the count. So that it at least reaches 10 sometimes. 
at at end of the time some time it has to reach the limit it cannot just keep on iterating if we keep on iterating it will go to an infinite loop and our execution will fail it will say some uh, heap memory or something is failing because after that it will not have memory only to load anything okay so we have to change the value of this count somewhere inside the loop so that it will reach its limit and it will exit the loop okay so that increment also we have to handle and we have to take care inside our loop itself okay so here or maybe at the end of the loop we have to write count plus plus so plus plus is an increment operator and it's a post increment operator post increment means it is incrementing after we are using it so you also have something called plus plus count that is called an uh, pre increment so that will increment the value first and then it will be using so let me just give a small example for that also pre increment and post increment so so increment operator so basically all the operators all the operator arithmetic operator logical operator all the operators that you see that operates on two operands okay so before that we'll see what an expression is so let's start from the basics so we have something called expression okay if you want to do any calculation you have to write an increment uh, expression 1 plus 2 2 plus 3 whatever it is so that's an expression so expression is a mathematical expression where you have operands and you have operators so expression equals to you have one operand on the left hand side this is a lhs operator of the and then you have operand then you have operand oops and between the two operands you have an operator okay so operator is the it could be a mathematical operator it could be logical operator logical operator will be less than equal to is a logical operator okay not equals to all those are logical operators okay and mathematical operators are like plus minus multiplication those are mathematical operation so in any expression you, you write you have two operands operands are the element on which the operator will work like to add two numbers you have operator equals to operator will be what plus operand will be let's say one plus two you're doing so the operands will be one and two okay so that is how you create an expression so all the expressions will have two operands operand one and operand two okay but in case of increment operation if in case of increment operator it takes only one operand so here operand is what operand is count so either count plus plus or plus plus count it will take only one value only when using one uh, one uh, operand only it will operate okay but any other operation like uh, addition subtraction multiplication it will take two operands okay so that is what an expression is and okay coming back to my increment operator so in my increment operator we have two types one is a pre increment okay and then we have a post increment okay so pre increment is incrementing it before so it will be like plus plus one or plus plus i this is a pre increment okay and then you have post increment which is i plus plus so pre increment and post increment in pre increment the value of the variable will change before and then it will be used in post increment the value will be used first then it will be changed so if I do something like so if I have an integer let's say integer is there integer i equals to 1 okay i's value is 1 now if I do on system dot debug system dot debug or sorry not system dot debug as of now so if I do so there are two things that I can do i plus plus this is my post increment and then we have plus plus i this is my pre increment so here the value of the i will be changed after it is being used so first the value is i so if i do any if i use i here in this line so first the value will be given to me that is uh, 1 and then it will be changing to 2 so first the value is utilized in the pre increment it is different here the value will be changed first and then it will be given to utilization 
so i can give one demo like maybe system dot debug if i put this inside a system dot debug log okay to get the what is the value actually i can put this inside the system dot debug and i can put this also inside the system dot debug okay so here if i run these two statements okay i value is equals to 1 and then i am using i plus plus so in the system dot debug it will what value will it show can anyone guess here what will be the value which will be displayed everybody it should show me 2 right harsh what value will show 2 or 1 2 okay it will not show 2 it will show me 1 ठीक है, I'll tell you why. So if I execute this highlighted part, if I go to the debug log, if I go to debug log here, so here it's showing one. Why it is doing that? Because in the debug log it is post increment. Post increment means the value of i will be utilized first. After that it will increment. So if I put a debug log, it will use the value which is already existing, which is one. After using it, then it will increment. So if I execute it one more time here, if I put the same statement one more time here, okay. As of now, forget about this pre-increment. Okay, as of now we don't have a pre-increment. Okay. Or here I just put system dot debug i. Okay. After incrementing, if I put a system dot debug i here, now the first line will show me one, second line will show me two. Okay, because here we are using the value of i, so i value will be used first, then the increment will happen. And in the second statement, if I am using it, it will show me the value. What is the content of i? So if I execute this, so it will come as one, and then it will come as two. ठीक है, now it is coming as one and two. So here we are using the value first and then the increment is happening. That increment is shown in the second statement. Okay, now is this clear okay. or any doubts? Clear, sir. See, this is a post increment. ठीक है, it's a post increment means we'll uh, in, use the value first, then increment it. ठीक है, so that's why it is post increment. Now let us say if I want to do a pre increment. Okay, so if I put one plus plus, sorry, plus plus i, ठीक है? Now can you guys guess what will be the uh, answer for the first line and second line? So in the first line, what will be the value? This from here to here? One. This will be one. Okay, and what should be the answer in the second one? No, it will be three. Okay, this will be three. I'll tell you why. Take a let's just check out the answer first. Okay, so if I put the debug log here, so it is coming as one and it is coming as three. Okay, why that is doing that? Because see, here system dot debug will do give me the value. Okay, so right now the value is one. So debug we are doing as so it is uh, post increment. That means it will display the value first. So it will display me one, and then it will increment it. So incrementing the value is changed to what? I didn't I didn't get. I mean the output in line twenty six is two, right? No 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 no. The output in the line number twenty six is one. Okay. Because it is post increment, it is incrementing after using the value. So right okay. now we are using it. You are using it to display. So it is displaying one. After displaying it from one, it will do a plus plus. So plus plus will increment a value. So plus plus it will become two. Okay. Okay. It so two is passed down to the next uh, line. Sorry. So two value two is passed on to the next line. Huh. 
value 2 will be passed down yeah. to the next line so it is supposed to display 2 yeah. but it will not display 2 because this is a pre increment here we are incrementing the value before using it so already it has made it 3 after making it 3 then we are using it okay okay so this is post increment this is pre increment that is the difference okay now you guys are getting it or you have any doubts so let's try to put another logs here okay so after execution of this system.debug if i put one system.debug here also and if i want to see the content if i see y uh, sorry i now it will show me two in this debug log it will show me two but here in the next line if i do a plus plus one okay uh, or sorry uh, i plus plus if i do a i plus plus here now if i do a uh, so uh, okay if i remove this okay so now this will give me one and this will give me two okay because both of them are post increment so here we are using the value one and then we are incrementing it to two so now here it has got two so two it will use first and then it will increment so it will give me one and it will give me two okay so instead of pre post increment if i do both of them pre increment if i do both of them pre increment now can you tell me what is the value of first line and second line what will be the answer of first line and second line so in the pre increment the incrementing is happening for first after that the value will be used remember that okay now can you guys guess this will be one, two, three. No. Okay. So this will be two, you're saying. Okay. And what will be the second line? quick 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 three so bala is this right so this is supposed to show me two this is supposed to show me three is that correct yes no maybe Let's resume. All right. So in this, what will happen? The so here also now this is so this also is becoming an infinite loop here because we are not changing the value of i. So i is equals to ten and i sorry i is always greater than or equals to zero. Okay, so it's become an infinite loop. So we can't use that infinite loop. It will keep on displaying 1, 1, 1. So it will keep on displaying 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. It will keep on displaying 10, infinite number of times. So we need to do a change inside the loop itself. So we have to do a change. So we have to do, uh, let's say, i minus minus. Okay, so i value is 10. Now it will become 9. So it will display 10 after that uh, 9 will be uh, it will become 9 then it is check it is going to check whether 9 is greater than oh sorry yeah whether 9 is greater than 0 it will say yes that is true so now it will go inside the loop okay so if you see the difference between while loop and do while loop so in the do while actually one statement is executing even if the condition is false okay so let us try to check out this example okay so okay i have to put one and in the syntax of do while we have one semicolon also here okay we have to put one semicolon also okay let us execute this and let us go to debug so if you see it is decrementing from 10 9 to 1 and in the end it is going to check whether the value is greater than uh, 0 so 
it will be zero zero will not be greater than zero so it will exit exit the loop okay so difference between while loop and do while loop is that while even if this condition is false then it will still execute once okay so if i say let's say if i put one condition here like i double equals to zero so first iteration the i value is 10 so 10 will will it be equals to zero no it will not be equals to zero okay so the condition is false still the execution will happen at least once because it's an and it's it's checking the condition only after finishing the execution once so now if i execute 10 will be sh uh, shown at least once okay 10 will be displayed here on the screen okay so even if my condition is false still it is executing that means it will execute the whole loop at least once Okay, so you guys understood what is the difference between while loop and do while loop? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Can you guys do me a favor tomorrow? Just do one program to display. Um, I have shown you guys how to uh, create inputs, how to provide inputs and how to provide outputs, right? To a method. So you have to create a method. Okay. So first thing is create a class. Okay. In your own org, create a class. In that org, you have to create a method. Okay. So create a method and the name of the method you have to give as let's say even number. There's a very basic we used to study in school but as uh, we are starting from the scratch so let's try to see if you guys are able to achieve it. Okay so even number. So name the class as even number. So this class uh, sorry name the method as even number. This is supposed to display me a number of even numbers like 2, 3, 4, 5 from starting from 2 and the ending point should be given by the user. Okay, till which number it has to display the output that should be given by the input, uh, by the user. Okay, so it is supposed to take one parameter, that parameter should be integer and that integer will be the limit. Okay, so till which limit you have to display the even numbers okay so this one method you have to create you guys understood what is the purpose of this so if whenever you call this method it will display me the number of even numbers till from starting from uh, zero to uh, the limit to the limit that is supplied by the user when you uh, call this method okay this question is understood okay now the second is create another method okay create a method so this will be odd numbers okay so here the odd number you have to take two inputs okay you don't have to start from the scratch you don't have to start from number two so this the even numbers you have to start from two four six eight like that you have to go till the limit so whatever the limit is given by the uh, by when you call the method that point of uh, limit you have to reach from starting from 2 okay but in the second one you have to take two inputs so first integer first integer will be the starting point okay so the starting number first integer will be starting number and the second integer will be the end number Okay, so so this should be displayed something like this. So let's say the starting number. So it has to start from the starting number. Let's say uh, the user gives starting number as 10. Okay, so it should start from 10, and then it has to give me like 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, like that. And till what point it will go? It will go till whatever is the end number. Okay, it will go till end number. This is understood. Okay. And both of them you don't have to create in an anonymous window. You have to create methods, proper methods in a proper class. Okay. Make it static, non static, doesn't matter. So you probably try to make it static methods only. Okay. And try to generate this output. So these two outputs you have to display on the screen. Okay. On this screen, on this debug log. So you have to put one system.debug log. Okay. So 
one class should contain two methods one should be displaying even number one should be displaying odd number one inputs one should take input as an integer limit one should be taking two in uh, two inputs as starting number and end number okay and no output is output is just a system dot debug log you don't have to add any return statement okay so it's pretty simple try to achieve it think straight and you will get it okay so in today's class we were supposed to see for loop also but we ran out of time that's fine we'll see for loop tomorrow okay as of now while sorry someone said something okay fine so for any questions any doubts increment operator decrement while loop do while loop no sir